Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Headlines You May Have Missed for Monday, January 8th, 2018. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv. As usual, if you want to read more about these stories that we'll be covering today, you can go to isheadlines.com. What we do is we try to see how many headlines can we cover within a 20 minute period of time. And like I promised last week, this week I have a clock. So when we actually dive in to the headline part of this, where we're actually gonna talk about the headlines, which is coming up real quick here, we're gonna actually have a clock so you could see how much time do we have left before. That's it, that's it. No more headlines. And with that, Let's begin. Let me switch this over to our first story. And boom. China creates digital police state test lab in Uyghur region. It seems that the so-called autonomous region of Uyghur, which is within China's borders, has become a digital police state laboratory with the Chinese government employing more than 90,000 personnel to track every scrap of data they can on the people living in the region. And they're doing this using a number of digital techniques, creating a super digital police state laboratory where they can test out methods and gear on the Uyghurs who have no major friends among the general Chinese population. And you can go here to, if you go to isheadlines.com, you'll get to this show edition and then you'll find this story, which links to the Liberty Web. So in the Liberty Web, we have AI and facial recognition, China's surveillance society experiment underway in Uyghur. So some of the highlights, China's surveillance system in Uyghur has become more severe and is heading toward disaster. Their approach to Uyghur is reiteration of Hitlerian ideology of xenophobia and purging of foreign races. Uyghur has her own Liu Zibao, e Ilham Toti, who was rumored to be a potential Nobel Prize Peace Laureate. The public has yet to know of the goings in inside the China-ruled Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Recently, however, the Wall Street Journal covered it and, and some Canadian newspaper here covered it. Oh, the Globe and Mail covered it as well. The Globe and Mail reported on the, this is from the article, on the severe surveillance of on Islamic mosques and how each individual's thought patterns and DNA data are recorded, especially among the children there is a strict rule to create a Chinese-speaking environment at school and they are not permitted to return home during the school term. So this is probably a story that a lot of other folks are going to be watching. And the, well, the story experiment, they're going to be looking at it. How, how well do they do using digital technology to totally monitor and control every aspect of the lives of the Uyghurs? And I'm sure some states are taking note, not in like any sort of cautionary way, but more in terms of what what do we think we can get away with? So that's so that's cool. So that's so the Uyghurs are basically. Uh, guinea pigs in a test lab to figure out how far can you go when you use digital technology to create a police state. Our next headline, laptop can go three days on one charge. A new breakthrough in laptop tech, laptop tech may, may enable computers to last for three days on a single charge thanks to ACPSs. And that's always connected personal computers. Qualcomm is the one behind the new tap top laptops, which could be coming to a store near you very soon. And this article is from uh, USA Today. Always connected personal computers or ACPSs or ACPCSs refer to a new breed of Windows laptops with three key features. A battery that can last multiple days, instant on access when you open the lid or touch a key, and an optional high-speed cellular connection to avoid hunting for a Wi-Fi hotspot, hotspot to get online. In other words, your laptop is going to behave a lot more like your smartphone. Qualcomm, the world's largest smartphone chipmaker, is largely spearheading this emerging 
category. So soon we will be able to have laptops, which, well, <laughs> they're a lot more powerful. They can go for a charge for three days. They'll turn on right when you turn them off. They'll be always looking for that uh, interwebs connection so you don't have to go through that process. And Sounds great. Sounds super. Sounds like we're going to be more connected for longer periods of time. That's just what we need, right? Our next headline, Feds try and fail to buy guns online illegally 72 times. That's right. You read that right. So if you think it's easy to purchase guns illegally online, well, guess again. And I'm sure your gun-grabbing friends, hoping to use fear to nudge you to supporting their anti-human, anti-liberty ways, would like you to believe you could purchase guns illegally online and thus, quote, we, I'm putting that in air quotes, we need stricter gun laws. But nope, it's not true. How do we know it's true? Well, how do we know it's not true? Well, federal investigators tried to do it 72 times and failed every time. And then this article is from the Free Beacon. Federal agents posing as criminals were unable to purchase any firearms from legitimate online marketplaces despite dozens of attempts over a two-year period. Between July 2015 and November 2017, investigators from the Government Accountability Office Following up on a congressional request, tried to make the illegal private gun purchases through a number of online forums and marketplaces. They made 72 attempts over that time, but couldn't complete a single sale using legitimate sites. Next headline. Nebraska bill to stop local anti-gun regs meets roadblocks and this is this is a i don't know how to interpret this story there's there's I, as i'm looking at this story there's so many times going yeah in the new i have well i'll get i'll get to why the the conflated reaction to this efforts to curtail localities from infringing on the fundamental human reality or right if you prefer that word, of self-defense, have been hard slogging in the Nebraska legislature as one man tries to find compromises. Boy, put your radar should be go up immediately whenever you hear that word when it comes to, to guns. Compromises to push through his bill. And the article then that I'm going to read from is from Omaha.com. Nebraska, law, Nebraska lawmaker hopes to make compromises in effort to end local gun regulations. From the article, a potential major shift in Nebraska gun policy stands on the sidelines as state lawmakers start debating legislation this week. Whether the bill gets in the game could depend on whether compromises can be reached. The sponsor of a bill that would end the ability of local governments to pass and enforce gun regulations said he intends to make another push to pass the legislation in coming weeks. State Senator Mike Hilgers of Lincoln expressed optimism that he'll broker agreements with the law enforcement and the municipal interest that oppose them. What a surprise. Law enforcement is 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 resistant. This is the thin blue line. These are the guys that, you know, they protect and serve. They don't want you to have guns. They are for localities being able to check your fundamental, I use the word, right to own and possess a gun. And the article continues here. I think what's important is no one has walked away from the table, Hilger said recently. Maybe so, but at least one major player has slid the chair back a bit. I wonder what major player that is. Are you ready to hear which major player is? The Omaha Police Union. That's right. The Omaha Police Union had taken a neutral position last year when the bill made it through the first three rounds of debate. Sergeant John Wells, the union's president, said his organization has since shifted to an opposition stance. And this is, this is the reason for it. The unions want to preserve an Omaha regulation it believes helps keep guns out of the hands of prohibited 
persons, he said. If that issue can be resolved, the union will move back to neutral, which could help the bill get past a certain filibuster in the second round. Exactly what is a prohibited person? No details were offered, and you know whenever the government is giving a broad stroke definition like prohibited person, you can be sure that your protections, the protection of your rights are being assured because that's how it works. And by the way, that's that's a little sarcasm there. I don't know if you've, I don't know how well you guys are at uh, understanding the sarcasm tone, but that was definitely the sarcasm tone being deployed at that uh, moment in time. The reason why I kind of kind of go back and forth on this issue or article is uh I don't I don't know that the idea of lobbying for your fundamental right to own a gun to possess a gun basically I bo I boil it down even more deeper or more basic than that and that is your human reality to tend to want to possess tools of self-defense that's what they're talking about checking they mean to check your ability to have with you the tools that could provide the most effective form of self-defense portable self-defense if you will and i don't i i i'm much i'm much more in favor of maybe not so much lobbying government as showing how government's laws can't really be enforced if people decide that they're not going to follow the law. So so I'm much more interested in, in displaying non-compliance, if you will, than I am in going to the government and asking, please, please, master, please let us let us let us have this right this quote unquote right to bear arms please if if it pleases the crown our next headline us appeals court rules you can spy on private property and share video okay i want to say in advance this is not a defense of cruelty to animals in farming and you'll see why in a second here but this is a chilling ruling the way I interpret it, and uh, my, my listeners are out there, if you're listening on the podcast version of this, if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're watching Facebook Live, which we put this on our, our state Facebook page, please, please let me know the error of my ways if I'm reading this wrong. So uh, by my interpretation, it seems that it's now okay to sneak on someone's property and film on their property, then share that video with the public. This is now a thing in America that is now a constitutional right, apparently. And this article is from Wisconsin Farmer, or wisfarmer.com. And I'll read a part from it. Idaho's ban on spying at farms, dairies, and slaughterhouses violated free speech rights, a federal appeals court ruled last week. The panel held that the subsection criminalized innocent behavior was staggeringly overbroad and that the purpose of the statute was, in large part, targeted at speech and investigative journalists, wrote U.S. Circuit Judge M. Margaret McKeon in a 56-page ruling. Idaho lawmakers in 2014 passed a law making it a crime to surreptitiously videotape agriculture operations after the state's $2.5 billion dairy industry complained that videos of cows being abused at a dairy two years earlier unfairly hurt their businesses. The measure passed easily in Idaho, of course, where agriculture is not only one of the leading businesses, but also the occupation of many state lawmakers. 
Animal rights activists, civil rights groups, and media organizations quickly sued once the bill received the governor's signature, arguing the law criminalized a long tradition of undercover journalism and would require people who expose wrongdoing to pay restitution to the businesses they target. So this, is, this isn't a cut-and-dry issue for me. This is, I mean, I'm not in favor of uh, what the, the folks did, and, you know, I... I don't have sympathy for the farmers if they're treating their cows cruelly and and they suffered a consequence from it and and now they're whining about being exposed as as uh, basically treating their cars like crap. But on the other hand, what you have is a a govern or a, a court that has essentially ruled that. People can sneak onto your property and videotape or video video boy that dates me doesn't it videotape and video stuff going on in your property and then share it with the whole wide world and that's perfectly okay to me yeah that opens up a whole can of worms and I'm I'm not really comfortable with with where that's going I I wonder what it would look like in a circumstance in which. You had a different form of governance, a free association form of governance. There would probably be some degree of, of mitigation that, well, okay, you went on the dude's property, and so, yeah, you got to pay something for that. Uh, but at the same hand, once it's kind of been exposed that someone is doing something like con abusing animals there's probably going to be a backlash anyway from them even if it's just that's it i'm not doing business with you anymore uh but in in this environment under a course of enterprise system it's you almost you almost have to absolutely pick a winner absolutely pick a loser and either way it's 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 not going to be good but i for one would would certainly err on the side of of not the property owner, not the farmer, but property ownership, I would, I would err on that side. Our next headline, Jordan pushes for recognition of East Jerusalem as capital of Palestinian state. Now, this is interesting, and I'm not sure if this is a trolley move or genuine statecraft, but apparently Jordan is pushing for international recognition of East Jerusalem as the capital of of the Palestinian state. Either way, it's an interesting counter to President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of, of, of Israel. And this is from Jamaica Observer. Arabs seek recognition for Palestinian capital in East Jerusalem. Jordan said on Saturday, the Arab League would seek international recognition of the Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital after Washington recognized the holy city as Israel's capital. Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi made the announcement at a joint news conference with Arab League Chief Ahmed Abul Ghait after talks in Amman on the status of Jerusalem. The talks were attended by the foreign ministers of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, and the Palestinian Authority, as well as by the United Arab Emirates Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. And I'll get to the last main story here, and that is Sophia the Robot called Wizard of Oz by Facebook AI Chief. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, it's this this great. Facebook's AI boss described Sophia the robot as complete bull, bloop, bull, bull, bloopity, as and Wizard of I of AI. Sophia the robot has made headlines at Business Insider and other media outlets for its threats to destroy all humans for becoming an actual citizen of Saudi Arabia and for rejecting marriage proposals. People proposed to her. That's great. Or the it, whatever. Read, this is from Business Insider. So this is Jan LeCun who tweeted, this is to AI as prestidigitation is to real magic. In other words, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, perhaps we should call this cargo cult AI or uh, Potemkin AI or Wizard of Oz AI. In other words, it's complete BS. Pardon my French. And there you have it. <laughs> that would be our last 
main story for the headlines, but we still have, as you can see, a minute and 21 seconds. So let's just go down through here, through some of the headlines that we didn't get to. We have 3D printed muscles that are cheap and stronger than an elephant. Gremlin drones released by flying aircraft carriers. That's the U.S. military that's doing that. Springfield, Springfield Armory transfers gun collection to National Park Service. German and Turkish officials vow to end spat. Oh, that's, that's interesting. U.S. net neutrality. <laughs> Internet Association to join legal battle. Gyrating robot strippers set to pole dance alongside human performers. It's only fair as Supreme Court ponders online sales tax. Alabama looks for solutions. Isn't that great? It's only fair. Wallet developers express security concerns over BitPay's payment protocol policy. Boy, say that three times fast. House Republicans prepare to move gun bills as Democrats ready attacks. Turkey will not risk actively disrupting Cyprus's energy plan, Greek minister says. And there you have it. We are out of time. We've done it. We've gone through our 20-minute headline, and now this show is over. To get more details for Is Headlines, or for the uh, headlines you may have missed, go to isheadlines.com. But also, be sure that you go to istate.tv, and isheadlines.com just takes you to a section on the site. And then you can read some of the headlines some of the top headlines that we don't cover in headlines that you may have missed, like how to kill the free blockchain, patent it. Did wheat create the extortion racket we call a state? That's a really, really interesting article there. And we got less waste, more power, more life, the next-gen lithium oxide battery. Coindesk editorials call for global regulation of cryptocurrency. Is there a Bitcoin killer that Bitcoin will detect first? And finally, Supreme Court to consider a 3D printed gun plan should be allowed to be shared. So be sure you go to iState.tv to get all of the main headlines, the headlines that are not featured in headlines that you may have missed. My name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv. Be sure you go over to the Sovereignty Network Facebook page at 1 o'clock, which is about eight minutes from now as I'm recording this show. And uh, if you're watching this afterwards, be sure you go to that page and uh, uh, like it. And every day at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 12 o'clock Central, you will see Kurt Welker. Kurt, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right now, who does Crypto Corner Live. It's all about cryptocurrencies. It's a great show. I, I watch it regularly. And I know as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to get upstairs because I my, ba my, my studio is in the basement. And I am going to make sure that I watch Crypto Corner Live. This has been Paul Goyer, Paul Gordon with Paul Goyer. Okay. Paul Gordon with iState.tv. And this has been Headlines You May Have Missed for January 8th. 2018 Monday. Be sure to join us tomorrow at the same place at 12.30 p.m. for the next edition of Headlines You May Have Missed.